Welcome to On the Water Magazine's Fishing New England. I'm Jay Baver. Today we're going to learn how a professional bass angler approaches a new body of water, one that they've never fished before, how they eliminate unproductive water, locate fish, and develop a pattern that produces consistent hookups. Then we're traveling to a saltwater marsh with Roger Swiderski and watch him as he hooks up with some jumbo stripers on his fly rod, and then attempts to set a new world record. First up though, let's join professional bass angler Mark Burgess as he shows On The Water Magazine's Neil Larson how to fish it like a pro. Out on the tournament trail, pro bass anglers are often faced with lakes they've never seen before. Some of these lakes are major league sized impoundments and there's a lot of water that needs to be eliminated quickly. We're going to learn how a pro bass angler dissects a new body of water and more importantly, how you can apply these techniques to any fishing situation. The easiest way to go about it is to fish visible cover that you, you can see both slightly below the water and above the water because um, bass are very structure orientated and that's the first place you want to you look. And then from there, if that doesn't work, just back off a little bit. Um, as we were just talking about that, I just saw a bass bust some, some bait here real shallow. That's visible, I saw it. Um, that's a clue that there's something going on over there. We'll just, we'll just start right here and, and, uh, and go from there. Just see how it all works sure. out and just adapt as, as we go. Okay. Mark and Neil started working the northwest shore of the lake, pitching into visible cover when some surface activity caught Neil's attention. All right. I saw a, uh, some schooling fish behind. Did you? Working on some herring. And uh, might be a little white perch or a little largemouth. Baby largemouth. Schooling fish tend to be a little smaller than. Yep, yep. That one fits the bill right there. This is another, it's an opportunity that we got seeing some schooling fish. It's more of a, a known factor that's going on right now, rather than the unknown going down the bank. Sure. We know there's a group of fish there, so we'll... Uh, we've, we've set one pattern, we know the schooling fish working on more than likely herring fry, right? That's right. I would, I would imagine this, this is connected to the ocean. This is some of that visible cover I was talking about. It's, it's a dock. Fish love to hang around largemouth bass, smallmouth bass. They love to hang around docks. I don't. I don't feel good about any of this. Yeah. Based on what we've done. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll zip right over the other side. I'll start down that bank a little bit, see how it how it is. Okay. Um, if it still doesn't happen, then we'll I'll change up completely. We'll take a run down the other end of the lake. Okay. It might be clearer, deeper, cooler water. Coming up, Mark finds the fish in a pattern that produces. Yeah. That's what we've been looking Who's for. your daddy? Nice. That'll work. Mark wasn't feeling it on the northwest corner of the lake. The wind was blowing out of the southwest, and he had a feeling the fish were holding along the weed line on the opposite shore, likely pursuing bait fish the wind had pushed there. Mark was soon proven correct as he hooked up. Yeah, oh, yeah, baby! <laughs> Just took the words right out of my mouth. Man, I was asleep at the reel on that one, too. Yeah! That's what we've been looking Who's for. Who's your daddy? Nice. That'll work. Yeah, he's on. He's on there. <laughs> That'll I score. I saw that one come up and... He's a little bigger. A little bit. That'll if work. I put, if I push them out for, by the camera a little bit, it'll look a little big. Get them right up in there. Yeah, pull them there. Neil just caught that decent fish right there, it was about a pound and a half. And then I had one about the same size blow up on the buzzbait right there. So in this, I, I feel good about this particular area right here, and there happens to be a dock with, with a couple of boats on it. Um, and if, if they're going to be anywhere, they'll be right here around this dock. Oh, that's a big fish. A real big fish. I don't think that big. Big enough, though. Oh, yeah. That 
Say what you will. I like this pattern. I like Mark. the pattern. <laughs> it was working. It may right not now. be working very often, but when it does, it's good. You talk a little bit about, uh, how you say, primary pattern. Is there, uh, you know, you, have, you set a, a secondary pattern, primary pattern? Yeah, it's, it, it, at any given point on any lake, there could be several patterns, different patterns uh, to catch fish. And what a pattern is, is you put together the same set of conditions. Like we've fished this, this weed line, the outside of this weed line along the bank. You know, with, with a, it's got the shade of the trees, two and a half, three feet of water, you know, with a tube and a buzz bait. That, that's our pattern. That's how we're catching fish. Yeah. Now, in the course of an eight hour day, I might have five bites, but they might be all as, as big as that one I just caught. That, that's going to win, win pretty much any local tournament or come very close to it. So that's, that's one pattern. It's either it just it's either just coming into its own, or I'm or I'm fishing it a little bit more efficiently, effectively I should say. Hey, you got a little more confidence after that. Uh, yeah. Three and a half pound. He'll keep. Yeah. There he is. This one's a little guy. He's gonna be a flying fish. Not the Go size we're looking for, but. Go in and get his big brother while you mess around with him. Yeah, we're going to let him go. I don't even think that'll keep. Might be a nice little green. One. Nice one. Get him. Ah, Good go. job. The old tube on the weed edge pattern and strikes again. There you go. Got a nice mid-sized fish. Yep, again, two, on the two on the tube tube pattern. Mark, if you could talk a little bit about the uh, the tube pattern that's obviously been established here. We'll like let yep. this guy go. No, it it worked well. We uh, we started out uh, throwing a little top water first thing in the morning. Uh, just conditions look good for that. We saw some schooling fish, so that made sense to do that. But they were real small fish. We had a few on a, on a buzz bait. Neil had net, uh, one on that uh, that Sammy, um, but it definitely wasn't happening. We were fishing up the north end of the lake, and things just looked a little little stagnant. Just wasn't getting it done. We moved down this end of the lake, the south end of the lake. Uh, found some slightly deeper water up against the bank, and again worked the top water. Um, and they were slashing at it. They really weren't committing. So we went to flipping and pitching and casting uh, black tubes with red flake, about a three and a half inch tube, quarter ounce bullet weight pegged with a rubber uh, toothpick. And um, they weren't buried up in it. They were just right on the outside edge. And I feel they were there because the wind was pushing against that bank. We saw an awful lot of baby uh, heron, yeah. the fry, the heron fry. And that's what those bass were feeding on. Um, the bites we had were quality bites, and I mean, it's we just kind of put it together as, as we went. And uh, it's tough come up. fishing when you're uh, competing against all that natural bait. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. There's a lot of food there. They don't necessarily have to take this and put right in front of the fish. That's they, it caused a reaction bite. They had no choice, either eat it or get out of the way. Um, but my feeling is there's a lot of fish in here right now, and you could really, really catch a lot of them on this pattern. There might be some other things you could do, but today we established this pattern and we caught some nice fish and had a good day. Stay tuned for some intense fly rod hookups. There it is, there it is, there she is, there she is. It's a good one, it's a good one. Each spring and each fall, striped bass travel to some unlikely places to cash in on nature's bounty of bait fish. Let's join Captain and Guide Roger Sudersky, aka Jolly Roger, as he shares with us one of his special onshore fishing holes and introduces us to some of his fin friends, compliments of his fly rod. 
Schools of bait fish fill New England's saltwater marshes each season, and on the changing tides, hungry striped bass will line up for the buffet. Make a cast. He's on, he's on, he's on. There he goes. This is what we call tidal fishing stripers. Big stripers coming into the tidal ponds to feed on bait fish. Well, we, we stalked that fish probably for over an hour. And it's just starting right now. This is a good fish. He just inhaled that thing. And as you can see, it wasn't much of a cast, just a little roll cast. I brought him right out of there. Oh, you're so beautiful. I love you. Oh, can you believe how pretty these guys are? Look at this. Come on, come on. Look at the size of this mama. She's a good, oh, I don't know. 15 pound fish, there you go. There you go. How's that? Cape Cod, inlet fishing, tidal marsh. Faster. There it is, there it is, there she is, there she is. It's a good one, it's a good one. Tidal fishing at its best. Cape Cod. Oh, come on, get in the current, get in the current. Oh, there she goes. She's going to the Cape Cod Canal. I'm gonna get out into the water a little bit so I don't spook any of the other fish that wanna come up there. No, it's not common to catch this size of fish on a fly rod. But they can be had at this time of year. Get out of the current, the current, the current. Okay. Oh, there she is. There she is. Oh, nice fish. Okay. Roger was using Clouser minnow flies because they not only look like the bait in the marsh, but their heavy weighted heads get them quickly into the strike zone. That was the big one, I think. I think there's a 20 plus pounder that just came up. So I'm gonna be very quiet <laughs> and try and sneak up on this fish. Let's do a cast and see what happens. You got it, she got it, she got it, she got it. Oh, I don't know if that's the big one, but it's a good fish. Oh, she's staying in the current. Oh, look at her going, look at her going, man, she's taking off. Oh, I love it, I love it. Oh, come on. I'm a Cape Cod's locals, which is all fitting, so we know this is real. I don't want to hook you up. I don't want to hook you up. Let's put this fly rod down and see what this guy, oh, huh? That's a good one. I don't know. I'd say 18, 20 pound fish. Let's get an idea. Oh, I got a mark. 38 inches. Okay, let's get her back, because she really fought. She really fought well. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Just back and forth, we'll get some water in her gills. She took that down quite a ways. The tail on that thing, oh, absolutely beautiful. Ready to go? Huh? They'll let you know when they're ready. 
Uh, come on. There you go. Okay, this time I think. Come on. Come on. There you go. Super. When we come back, Jolly Roger attempts to set a new world record. Roger couldn't resist going back, and this time the fish were boiling for his world record attempt. I got two pound test tippet, a fly rod, and I want to try and catch a world record, at least 15 pounds. The existing record is 14.4 for two pound test. And in the background, we got some fish that are in that class. We're going to give it a try. I'm stalking these fish now for four days. We know that there's some potential world record fish in here. As you can see them just surfacing, sucking in bait. We got two pound test tippet. I'm gonna make a cast when I see the big, big, big fish come up. And there it is, right there. He's on, he's on, he's on, he's on. I got one. I don't know how big it is. It's a good fish. It's a good fit. Fuck you. Yeah. He's on. He's on. Careful. 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 Let him go. 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 Oh, I don't know. Oh. Oh. He's on, he's on, he's on. He was there, that was the huge one. That was a huge one, he was on. I don't know what happened there. Come on, eat it, eat it, eat it. He's on, he's on. I don't know, let's see, come on. Let's get the hook. Uh, it's a good fish, I don't know. It's as big as the other ones. Fuck, let's... Let's get out into this slow moving water. Let's get out into this slow moving water here. He's still on, he's still on, he's still on. He's still on, he's going back up the channel. He's going back up the channel. Oh no. I'm gonna try and... They are such a magnificent, magnificent fish. Absolutely. Love these fish. Admire. I've seen my fly a bunch of times. But he got it. He got it. This is like. Oh. I know I had probably four world potential world records on already. Can you believe that? There he is. Just came back up again. Come on, this may be the last one. This may be the last one. You got it, you got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Come on. Come on. Okay, I can't put too much pressure on him. Okay, come on now. Come on now. This isn't the huge one, but it may be. And slowly, gingerly, kind of move him towards shore, walk him towards shore. Oh, I don't know. It looks like it's going to be close to the 15. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Lots of people. Lots of people. Lots of people. I got it. I got it. I don't know. It's going to be close. By our unofficial scales. Official scales. 13 and a half. It's not going to be a world record. A 13 and a half pound striper on two pound test tippet is an extraordinary catch. 
but not a world record. Roger would have to wait until the Stripers return next season to try again. If you'd like to learn more about today's show, visit onthewater.com. Thanks for watching Fishing New England. I'm Jay Baver, and we'll see you on the water.